going on, everybody? This is your boy Corbin, the Serpent Tongue Skip with, and I'm here with very special guest, Beyond Strid. How are you today? Good, good. Thanks for having me. Good to be here. Thank you very much. I'm excited because we get to talk about your new album, which is Yes. Early Even Hetten. Yes, it's uh it's a great title. I wish I could pronounce it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Um, Well good. Yeah, so again, thank you so much for your time. I was, just, I, I've been looking forward to this for a few days now. So thank you again. Well, thank you. Thanks. Okay, so the first thing I want to know is, what was the process like in recording this album? Because if I remember correctly, your last album was 2019, which was before mm. COVID, if I'm correct. Yeah. And this one's post COVID, yeah. for the most part. So yeah. what was it like? Yeah. The differences in recording the two different albums. Well, the only difference was really that we could take our time, you know, uh, and uh, but then again, we didn't really know how long, you know, I mean, COVID is, is, is still a thing. It's still an ongoing thing, but, you know, everything was quite scary at the time and, and all you could do was to just, you know, remain sort of creative, but also spend some time with family and, and actually get some perspective on, on, on life and <laughs> And what you've done so far, you know, it was really the first time in 20 years I got to sort of stop and, and sort of digest, you know, what what we've done with, with soil work and, and where I was in my life and, and um, even getting to know my myself a little bit better, I was going to say. Um, so it's, it's been a, an interesting two years, you know, and, and meanwhile, we started writing uh, what was going to become... Uh, Elvig even Hetten and uh, David was in a very creative phase from from the get go and but meanwhile I was sort of I needed a break you know and and uh, so it's not like I you know welcome a pandemic coming in but as far as the timing I, I was I was right there I needed a break and uh, so I had to distance myself a little bit uh, and meanwhile he was writing a lot. And then further down the line, after, I don't know, half a year or so, I, I, I sort of felt like, okay, I, I, I need to get back to it now. Maybe otherwise I'm going to lose it, I was going to say. And, and then uh, so I sort of had to like force start the, the sort of engines, you know, a little bit. But, but uh, you know, which felt like, oh, I shouldn't have to force it, you know, it should come to me, but it didn't. And then I, I, I sort of, you know made myself you know approach song songwriting and and uh some really really good things came out you know um some really beautiful melodies and, and i i felt that i was really connecting you know i just had to write one song and then it all opened up so, sort of and and uh and then you know recording the album you know we, we got to to spread out these recording sessions you know rather than booking a studio for six weeks straight where it's really hard to focus you know and being there like being present in in the music the whole time it's it's quite a hard task you know so i think this was uh this was really good for us uh, you know we could do like a long weekend or a week and then sort of shut the door and then return to it you know a month later and then sort of rediscover what it was that we actually recorded because I, I i on you know i really shut that door on purpose and not like I, I didn't ask the you know producer for like rough mixes or anything like that no let's just shut that door and then move on and then we can return to it so that was quite interesting coming back to it it's like wow we wow this is good you know this is we, we actually did this we recorded this like so that was that was a really cool feeling you know and and um it gave us some perspective and I, I maybe, I don't know, maybe you can hear that on the album. I think it's uh, very strong. And I think uh, there's this, this, a lot of emotions running all the way through. And I think, uh, um, you know, the presence, you, you, you can, you can, you can definitely feel that, you know, because uh, we managed to give each and every song the attention it deserves in the end, I guess. Yeah. Um, no, nah, this album was phenomenal and, and I'll get like, I'll get to why in a second, but, a question. So during the the worst, well, um, during the the few years of COVID, when it was at its worst, it seemed like was touring stopped completely for you guys. One hundred. Uh, yes. Yes. Wow. It did. Um, we didn't. Well, I mean, in Sweden, we didn't have we didn't have a lockdown in Sweden, but I mean, you you normally 
So I mean, there, there was a few chances to do like a, maybe a, a show here and there, but we we decided not to when it was very uncertain with everything. So um, and and most of them got canceled in the end anyway. So yeah, yeah, like festivals and stuff. I was gonna say like this is probably one of the most unprecedented moments in history for music. We've never had a pandemic affect the entire music industry before so it must be really oh, no wild. that's true that's true yeah yeah um yeah but you know we're back now so for yeah the most part. yeah knock knock <laughs> knock yeah yes yeah. um so the next question i have is what was your mindset or your goal your end result for this album what what were you going in there thinking okay i want this to be this record and did you feel like you achieved that completely on this record it's hard to say exactly what what the mindset uh, was because uh, it it came together during a pretty long period of time, you know. Uh, so I guess it wasn't that intense in the same way uh, as you know I, I spoke before about you know booking a studio for six weeks. Uh, but meanwhile, we could be focused the whole time we were in there, and I think I just really when I opened up that door, like I, I mentioned before, like a lot of things came flowing in. And I think maybe because I had the time to realize who I've grown to be, you know, and I'm not talking about, you know, music or just, I'm, I'm strictly talking about as, as a person, you know, and I think I wanted to capture that in, in the music and, and, and express that emotionally. Uh, and especially for me through through the melodies and I think that's why I came up came up with some 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 really good melodies and some of the stuff that I you know I, I feel like it's you know the best I ever written you know and uh, so I think it, it de definitely reflected on, on in, in the songs you know and and uh, you know of course I wrote lyrics too but I, I would say that David wrote most of the lyrics uh, but the, like I mentioned, I, I feel I'm pretty good at, you know, uh, expressing myself emotionally through, through melodies. And that, that's something that, that I really wanted to do as well. That was very, like, a, you know, crucial for me, I would say. Um, do you ever think back um, after making this album, do you, do you ever wonder if this album would have sounded the way it did had COVID not happened? That's a very good question. Um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, since, since we didn't really have, you know, like a full lockdown, I mean, life sort of continued sort of as usual, but at the same time, we had this sort of like interfere with, with, with what's going to happen. Is this my generation's, you know, Second World War or whatever, you know, and then little did we know it was going to get even worse after that. And that, yeah, but uh I don't know. I mean, I, I think it would have been maybe pretty much the same, but at the same, but at the same time, like I, I mentioned before, that I actually got th this time to to reflect on things and, and and my life. So maybe maybe it would have been different. Maybe maybe these melodies wouldn't have come out. You know, maybe it, it would have sounded a bit. No, I mean, I, I wouldn't say that we ever released something that sounds forced. You know, but may, maybe in comparison it would have sound a bit more forced. This maybe is a bit more natural even. Yeah. Like organic in that sense. Yeah. Yeah. Well, after listening to this album, it the two things that to me that stood out as far as styles to me was like, I've had a strong connection of symphonic metal and power metal. Those are the two things I mm. found most in this album. Like you got the larger than life. You got the huge um, production feel. And then you have the power mm. metal, the amazing vocals, the fast instrumentation. Um, so that's mm. what I felt. Do you feel? Do you feel that that's what you're going for on this record, stylistically? Oh man, uh, hard to say. I mean, I I, thought, I wanted it to sound very organic, but at the same time very big, like very epic and atmospheric. So I mean, when you refer to power metal, I'm I mean, general, I wouldn't say that I'm that much of a power metal fan but but then you know there are certain elements i guess that you could maybe draw references to you know and and uh 
and I've been, I, I guess I've been also in, in influenced by like, you know, going back to, to our roots, you know, the nineties with everything that was going on in the mid nineties and, and, you know, an album like uh, storm of the lights, Bane by dissection is always an album that never ceases to, to inspire me. You know, it's like at least, especially the atmosphere on the, on that album. And I think maybe that had something to do with it. You know, it's, uh, uh, yeah, it's hard. It's hard to say, but it, it's that's definitely one of those elements that I wanted to be to to, to run through the album, the the atmosphere and that like uh, spine chilling melody. So I was gonna say it's like you know, yeah. Well, I was just gonna say myself. Um, you do have a good point because when I'm listening to the songs and I'm listening to the melodies, I'm listening to the vocal. <laughs> performances they very much sound genuine they sound authentic they sound real and that's the first thing i picked up like wow this is some intense shit but it's just like it's emotional it's it's purposeful it's you know eccentric it's all these things and so that's how i know what you're saying is true because i could feel it while listening to the mm-hmm. record right i'm glad you feel that way and, and thanks for mentioning that yeah and that's that's really what we want people to feel as well you know because it it is real you know and it's not processed it's uh yeah, it's it, it's a band playing, and it's a it's it's a singer who's singing. <laughs> so it's like there, it's it's not you know it hasn't gone through a, a bunch of filters you know in that sense. Uh, and and because uh, if there's raw emotion through it, you know you, sh- you should not cover that up. You know it's uh, it's very important. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. Um, you definitely chose the right method for this album. Um, speaking mm. of, so the track list is fourteen tracks. Was that intentional? Yeah. Is, is there a purpose for that number or was just the album you chose, the amount you chose? No, I don't think there's a, a purpose. I mean, it, then again, it's like I, I don't think we ever had 14 songs on one album. I mean, you know, uh, except on, on the, the double album, uh, obviously. Uh, but as, as far as our regular albums, you know, uh, I think this is the longest album too. Uh, I might be wrong, but I think it, it, it's like 65 minutes and 14 songs. So um yeah that's quite a, a brave move i was gonna say but it's like we have this interlude in the middle as well that sort of divides the record a little bit and i think that really worked out really well um and and in the end it's 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 uh you know it's 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 never getting boring i think it's it's uh, it's quite a journey and it, it, it's exciting all the way through and, and you can you can feel the presence like we spoke about before, you know, running through it all, all the way through, you know. Yeah. Well, actually, there's two interludes, isn't there? There's a middle one and then there's a one minute. Well, part. yes. Yes. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Um, which I found really because what's what I find fascinating about your guys work on this album is I could actually differentiate between the between what what would be the interludes without even checking my phone for the length. I could hear. It. I'm like, oh, this is a switch up. This is this. This has to be an interlude, and I was right every time. It's just, it's so beautiful. It's so melodic, and um, I think I, I think it's the perp- it's the perfect um, it's the perfect thing to do to refresh the album, and you know, give it a little bit of yeah. an oomph, bet- um, cutting the album. I guess into three, really, because you got yeah. the one at yeah. the start yeah. towards the start, and then one towards the end. So I think it was a very really smart yeah. move by you guys. Absolutely. It felt very natural to put them in there, you know, it, and it all happened in the studio. It was never planned. It happened, you know, in a sort of a heat of a moment. And, 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 you know, some of the guys stayed up real late. I was in bed when most of these interludes were recorded and it was all recorded live. And I woke up and the guys were looking really rough. It's like, oh, what are you being up to? Oh, we've been up all night. We've been recording this, this instrumental piece. You want to hear it? It's like, all right. OK. It's like, wow. You know, that's that's cool. And then, you know, we decided to, to have that, you know, place that as an interlude in, in, in the middle somewhere, you know, so and, and in other places where it sort of felt sort of connecting the songs together, you know, and, and had a natural flow. You know, this is actually quite funny because when I first listened to the interlude towards the towards the back end, I could have sworn it was inspired by the song Last Christmas by Wham. It, it, it had, <laughs> to me, in my head, I heard the same kind of yeah. keys and I was like, oh shit, is this as far as I went? But it probably wasn't. But in my head, that's what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. 
<laughs> yeah. That's um, a first for sure. I haven't heard of that before. That's funny. Yeah. Um, which leads me to a question. How much, so within the band, what kind of process do you guys have in place like to make sure that ideas, submissions and like ideas by different, uh, by different band members um, like are looked at carefully, you know, e- like equally? How do you guys equally share the creativity, the what goes on the album, what, what stays out? Well, it's, it's, you know, it's all sort of in the open, like anybody is allowed to, to, to write songs. There's no, like, how, how can I say? Uh, you know, everybody knows in the band that they, if they feel like expressing themselves, they can through this band. And I think that's a beautiful thing. You know, there's been lineup changes and there's some people, that, you know, like Bastian, he hasn't been in the, band for more than what is it now it's well it's, i guess it's getting close to five years now um but uh you know he knows he can express himself and so it's really you know so it's it doesn't really matter from from who in the songs come from in, in the end you know as long as it's good and it fits sort of the, like the, the silent mutual vision that we have that we never really sort of speak about we never analyze too much you know uh we just go for it, and we all know that each and every release need, needs to be, you know, has the element of surprise, you know. Yeah. And I think um, that's something that most of our fans have grown to to love about the band, you know, that it's not a band that will sort of rehash Natural Born Chaos or Stabbing the Drama, you know. This is, we're moving forward, and we're finding new ways to stay relevant in, in, in the metal scene. Yeah, and... You know, you guys have one of the most underrated discographies in all of metal. So you guys, wow. well, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean it. Like, you guys are a household name to me. And when I had this opportunity to interview you, I was blown away. I was like, "This household band, I have to do it." And um, okay, cool. You proved again cool. why you guys have lasted as long as you have. Um, phenomenal album. Mm. And Thank so you. the fourteen Thank tracks, besides the interludes, were the tracks. Um, put in a specific order or was it just uh, yeah no I, that's definitely something that we're all uh, always feeling out uh, you know it's it's I, I wouldn't say it's like conceptual it's more like a feeling you know that we try to you know sometimes I know some bands like oh we can't have that song af- coming after that one because it's the same drum beat it's it's not about that it's more the feeling of things and the vibe and 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 uh what sort of pictures that song generates in your mind. And, and, and uh, I know it sounds quite pretentious, but you know, it's, 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 it's really a, the feeling, you know, in the end. Yeah. Uh, do you guys have a process for after you've recorded an album, do you have a process post recording before you send it out to like, to be released? Do you have to listen to it over and over before to make sure to check for anything or is there any process or ritual you guys do? no i wouldn't say we have anything like that i mean we, we we usually feel quite you know confident once once the album is recorded and then we find you know listen through the songs to find a, a good a song you know order or whatever and and once that's done you know we usually feel very it fall into place you know and and then we get the master and then you of course listen to it day and night for like months until you can't stand it any longer and then it's still not out yet <laughs> i was gonna say but um yeah i think that this one is definitely gonna last and, I, and that's what i felt with vacuum as well i said wow i can i can i can keep keep listening to this album i'm i'm not getting sick of it that you know not saying that i've gotten that sick of of of, of albums in the past but there, i don't know there's a spe- special feeling and maybe that's something that is um it's a sign of us creating even more sort of timeless stuff as, as we go. I don't know how to yeah. say. Um, have you noticed a different mindset for, because, you, because you've been in the business for a while and have you noticed any difference in your, in your mindset from recording when you were younger for your first albums to now? Is there a different process that you feel at? Um, I guess it's being younger, it's, it's, it's a bit more spontaneous. And sometimes that that's why people, you know, always talk about that band's first album is the best one. And then it went downhill from there, you know, and, and they, they have a point because there is this primal thing 
where you don't analyze anything. You just go in there full force and just throw everything that's on your mind in there and don't you know, think twice. So there's a charm around uh, about, you know, in, in that. And, and uh, so I, I think that's, that's the main difference. But then you become a better musician and a better songwriter and, and uh, get a better ear for things, I guess. And there's pros and cons to that, I guess. But uh, I think for us, it's, it's, been, it's been pretty good, you know. And, and, um, but of course, we also appreciate the sort of primal era, I was going to say. Yeah. There's something about it. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. Um, yeah, you, hmm. you do hear bands or fans say that a lot. Like, oh, the first few albums, yeah. it's because they, they had nothing to lose. Or they had exactly. yeah, this rawness that you can't, once you get famous, you can't really match that again. <laughs> it's kind of yeah. not the same. Yeah. No, but I think it's like, I think we had the sort of like a nervous era, era where we cared a, b- a bit too much. You know, I think in like the sort of the, the mid era, even though those, those albums were very successful and Stabbing the Drama is such a great album, but it, it was also quite, quite like a nervous era, you know, in, in, in a way. And I feel we're back to the sort of, as much of ourselves that we throw into to the sound, we're also in, I, I feel like I'm, I have this sort of don't care, like carelessness. I know that sounds weird, but do you understand what I mean? That there's like, I, I can do whatever I want. Yeah. And, 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 uh, and I, I'm, you know, I, I'm liking this and, and I'm, I'm throwing myself in there and that's all that matters. You know, it's, uh, I guess I don't care as much what, what people think anymore. But of course, I also, what drives me is to make music that, uh, that touches people and make them happy, you know? And, and, and so, of course, I take the fans into consideration. That inspires me, but I will never let go of providing something for myself that, that uh, sort of enhances my my life somehow or i don't know if that makes sense but but yeah that that's that's the main purpose in the end you know yeah. otherwise it's and any fan is you know they're going to be able to see through it in the end yeah no i love that answer very um very thoughtful you're a very smart guy <laughs> <laughs> Me too. um so what what inspired the album title what does it mean well, I mean, I, I guess we're on this little trend now where we'd like to to uh, to uh, have uh, find Swedish titles for for our albums. We had the uh, Vakleten, previous one, which means reality, and I mean, we it's quite a powerful word. I mean, we all have our own realities, and then you know, we felt like it was it, we got sick of of naming our albums, you know, in in English, and it's like and, you know, and we decided to find powerful words in Swedish and we found another one <laughs> and that was over even hit them uh, abandonment you know and I think it's quite a powerful word and I think most of us uh, can relate to it you know the fear of being abandoned and but also you know the fear of, of abandoning something or someone you know is it there's you can see it from so many different angles you know and uh so I think, um, I don't know, it, it, it creates a, a little bit of a new d- dimension as well to, to our sound, you know, and I think it really rhymes with the sort of very, you know, sort of melancholic uh, melodies running through our, our, our latest albums, you know, it, it sounds very Scandinavian, I guess. And I think that's where we sort of reconnect to, our, to the beginning of our career, where we have had those elements as well. And I feel that got lost a little bit in, in you know, the mid 2000s. So that's something that we're revisiting, but it's still brand new somehow, you know? Yeah. Um, and I also want to know about the album cover. How did that come about? Well, <clears throat> it was actually David's idea of having some, like a, like a, something very s- simple, like a drawing. And he had this friend who he said like, oh, he's, he's, he's a really good, like I really like his drawings, and uh, so we basically, you know, he, he he offered to do like free of charge. I'll just make an idea, you know. You can see if you like it or not. So he came up with his drawing, and I think it really, 
you know, rhyme with the with the title of Even Head and with the bird in the middle, and then you know, maybe at a first glance, it's quite uh, it seems sort of flat, but the more you look at the picture, it sort of pulls you in, you know, and it has a lot of depth to it. And those trees that you see in this alley, they're you know, you see a lot of those in, in the part of Sweden where, where I come from, which is the very south. So they have this this sort of strong feeling of, of like a desolate feeling almost to, to them, you know, like a abandonment. So that really fit really well. And then, so it was just a black and gray uh, drawing from the beginning. And then we talked about having some colors in there. And then I, I asked my girlfriend, who's a graphic designer, to, to play around with colors. And... Um, so this is what we, you know, see now. This is a finished product, and I think it turned out really good. It worked really well with the colors too. Uh, so that was quite interesting to see that sort of taking shape, you know. And I think it it really fits uh, with the music on this on this album. Yeah. Um, even though it's not the same artwork at all, it when I first saw the album cover, it reminded me a bit of stylistically. It kind of reminded me of um, the album cover for Led Zeppelin Four very you know the old man oh like, yeah. I know it's a different yeah. cover but it reminded me yeah. of very drawn very like simple but powerful <laughs> yeah yeah and, yeah uh, yeah simple but yeah exactly and i think that's a good description i think that's what we wanted to have and, and it's like you know as soon as we get comfortable in something i think we we constantly strive to do something different you know uh and i think you know with vaclet and being very like this majestic almost like prog like 70s cover uh you know i think this became maybe a little bit of a reaction to it you know and, and to find like a simple drawing but still powerful yeah yeah um so i'm curious throughout the whole album do you have a song that you a favorite song that you love to love to make the most out of the whole set well, I mean, I would say the title track, and that was the very last thing I wrote before entering the, the very last recording session for this album. So it's quite funny how the opening track came together the night before, you know, and, and uh, I, I don't know wh where it came from, but it was like, wow, I, I felt right away that I had something special on my hands and, and I feel, felt very inspired. And uh, it ended up being the, the opening track and, you know, with the beautiful arrangements, with the choirs that we recorded at a church as well. That, that was, wow. And, and the, there's a banjo and this <laughs> turned into this, this massive thing, you know. Uh, so I'm, I'm really pleased with it. So recording, recording in a church, like, what's that like? What's that like for a metal band to come in and be like, hey, can you help us? <laughs> with some chorus well this 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 was david's connection because he, he i think uh you know he's a doctor and and one of the nurses was in a choir so so he asked her i think if they could set something up it's like oh yeah we usually rehearse in this church and it's like okay uh so that's that's yeah that's how it came about you know simple as that yeah nice well mm -hmm. look i just want to say the whole time we've been talking i just I can't like it's just mind blowing to me how how good the vocals really were on that album. And to talk to you like hear you like it's like I can't kind of put two to two together. <laughs> it's just um at, <laughs> That's awesome. you know, well thank you. You have such an alpha presence about you, and then on the album it's this majestic vocals, and it's just like it, it's really a credit to you. And I can't I can't express how much I love this album. And um, yeah, the vocals are a big part of it. So congratulations on that. Thank you so much. That means a lot. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, well, look, th this has been an amazing interview. Um, thank you so much for your time. And, and and again, I can't wait for this to hit streaming services and physical copies. And I know it's going to be a blast. And I'm going to be here to listen to it over and over again. Very cool. Thank you so much for supporting us. Thank you again. And um, hopefully, really appreciate we'll, hopefully we can Thanks stay in contact me. soon. Absolutely. Take care. See you on tour in, in, in uh, November then. Yes, I will definitely see you then. Yes. All right. <laughs> okay. Take care, man. <laughs>